How do we take down the Soviet Union the first time? I'll tell you how we did it. We crushed their hard currency cash flow like cockroaches. That's how we did it. I mean, we killed their energy earnings. We killed their subsidized credit arrangements where they were, we were financing 100% of their, of their gap between what they were spending and what they were making. In other words, we were underwriting the whole show. They didn't believe then or now in the extraterritorial application of U.S. law. <clears throat> so, that led us to close off the U.S. market to six European companies, four of which went under within six months. We had them choose between doing business with the Soviet Union or doing business with the United States but one thing was for sure, they weren't going to do both. Now that's resolve. That's leadership. The Soviet Union would be here now if it weren't for Reagan. I mean, Putin wouldn't have to be recreating it. It would still be there, and Ukraine would still be under the repressive thumb of Moscow and never would have left. There would be no color revolutions, no nothing. So. There is an instance where sanctions worked because we went after, again, the money. And so I think that the Chinese have made another breathtaking mistake. I rely on President Xi to do that kind of thing. He makes big mistakes. That's the, the greatest benefit that we have from his brutal uh, dictatorship is the fact that he's not very bright. And he makes, you know, some breathtaking errors. And we, we can capitalize on those errors and have. Our democracy is funding a totalitarian police state bent on our destruction and, and uh, taking down our way of life and everything we hold dear. That constitutes, because of the multi-trillion dollar dimensions, the greatest financial scandal in human history. And that's why I've dedicated so much of my time to that one subject. Because if we can fix the money thing, surprisingly, every, everything else is fixed. France and Italy felt that Putin's Russia, Putin himself, was somebody they could do business with. And did so. And still, you know, harbor the view that they can make gains with this brutal dictator. After all, India just bought three million tons of Russian oil at a 20% discount, and Russia said they'll provide the insurance and the shipping costs. Well, that's a pretty sweet deal. So this is how the real game is played. You know, you dangle all the economic and financial benefits and you basically, you know, promise the world. We've seen it a million times. So this is no exception.